parade. The smell of the hump, the lick of the crump parade. <laughs> Please don't talk about the smell of the hump in front of me. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction TV. It's I'm Corbin. I'm and you can follow us on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter. 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 It's so juicy. You know, put my arm on if you're gonna do that. Twitter, Twitter account. And ring the bell to be part of the notification squad. <gasps> wow, that's so loud. Today, we are doing a food video. I'm hungry. Yes. Uh, but this one is uh, different. Same guy. So the best food ever review show, which we've seen a few of his. We love it. Yep, we like uh, it. But this one's called How India Cooks Lunch for 50,000 People for Free. What? The Miracle in Punjab, India. What? I think we've seen a video uh, where they feed a bunch of people every single day. Well, we, we they do that at the Golden Temple. Yeah, that might be what this is talking about. Ah, okay. Uh, but I didn't know the numbers of people who, who eat there, but it's in the thousands. And I know so what, maybe that's what this is. I knew it was the Punjabi people that did Well, it. there you go. I think uh, that is it. So maybe that's We're what We're about this to is. find out. Uh, but it's either that or they've made one hell of a pancake. But 50,000 people. That's like Dodger Stadium. Every single day. Every single day. It's insane. Here we go. Have you ever seen a pot this big in your life? I mean, look at the size of it. It's bigger than a swimming pool. Welcome to Amritsar, home of the largest Sikh temple in the world. Oh, wow. Look at this. Just take a moment. Maybe a hundred people making chapati by hand. On an average day, over 100,000 people are fed here and over 150,000 during holidays. And then another kind of lentil. Wow. I'm here to see how they do it. How does a place almost completely run with the help of volunteers and donations manage to provide unlimited food for visitors 24 hours a day? Welcome to the Golden Temple here in Amritsar. I'm with Simran. Thank you so much for joining me. It's my pleasure. Simran, a member of the Sikh faith, is guiding the way. It's a rice pudding, basically. A rice pudding? Yeah, rice pudding. In Punjab, like, which we can call. All that you see today was started with about 20 rupees and a few volunteers. I mean, look at all these people. Here to help. Now this kitchen could feed the entire town I grew up in in a single afternoon. And it still manages to be one of the cleanest, most well-organized places I've ever been. I mean, you wonder, like, how can they make so much food in one day, but everything is so smooth. So, so, so smooth. Today we're getting a close-up look at the miracle that is Amritsar's Golden Temple. To the Sikh temple, but first we need to get our head covering, so we are headed to ask right about now. that. I was wondering right why he was wearing like that. Turban shop. And I assume right. the turban shop, which helps you to tie up right. to cover up your head. All those who enter the temple must wear a head covering. It can oh. be as simple as a handkerchief or a four meter long turban. This is the turban store that we've come to. Basically, Sikh represent this color because it's an orange color. When you go to the Golden Temple or any other temple, you just can find out the flag which is flying here. It's also of Sikh this color. It represents the color of Sikh community. Do you wrap your own turban? Yes. I mean, if there's anyone you're gonna have to tie a turban on your head, this guy. Put it in your mouth and put it <laughs> very hard down off your teeth. Huh. I think he's getting ready. <laughs> Can I talk yet? Sikh men must wear a head covering when in public, but the color and the length are up to the individual. Um, should I keep holding this in my mouth? I kind of need to host the show at some point. He said it's a blessing of God. It's a blessing of God. That feels sturdy. I like it. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Oh, should we do a little bonus? Thank you, sir. Perfect. Awesome. So we're ready to go yeah. to the temple now, right? Before entering the temple, we check in our shoes here. Then, before entering, we must wash our hands and then our feet. Washing our feet before entering, and then right here is entrance. The area inside the temple is massive, built around a holy pond. People worship here, collect water to take home, and some completely submerged Bernie merge themselves. We are right on near the holy pond of Golden Temple. People are coming here and take a dip in a holy bath, and they feel that the Almighty of God are blessing us, and they are not sick, they are well. Amrit means holy water, pound means sir. So holy pound, Amrit sir. All the guys are here. The, the women, 
Are they over there? Yeah. Because of modesty, privacy, privacy. And like, like uh, some special respect for the women. There is a separate, a separate area. Mm. They can take bath here. They can take bath their side. So from here, we're gonna go see the kitchen, right? Yes. Right now we're headed to the kitchen. Uh, they have a lot more going on right now. The meal. I mean, look at all these dishes. There's already thousands of bowls. They are the volunteers who are just uh, cutting vegetables. All volunteers here. This is literally a uh, hundred volunteers here. Hello. Here they're peeling some garlic right here as all these people work together to make this meal happen. Whoa. We have just entered the kitchen, so if you look to your left here, you can see a ton of people eating inside. And then on this side, which is a huge vat of probably lentils. What is this one? It's a rice pudding machine. A rice pudding? Yeah, rice pudding. In conjunction like with three and four cheese. This is only the serving area. We haven't even seen the kitchen yet. <laughs> Immediately what I see, all this wood right here on this side here. They're stoking the flame, they have embers going, and, and these giant pots. It's a giant pot. Underneath, they have the fire for whatever is cooking inside, but this is so huge. Hello, sir. What's your name? Yeah. Oh. Sunny TC. Oh, nice to meet you. Sunny. Hi. So here, I mean, I've never seen cooking vessels this big. It's bigger than a swimming pool. And they have a faucet turned on, and even that would probably take an hour to fill this whole thing. They cook daily guys putting in this bowl. 2600 kg. It's just, it's more than I can comprehend. Yes. It's more than I could eat in a year. Yes. They're cleaning a pot that's already done cooking. It's a huge pot right here. What is this one? It's uh, called Dal in Punjabi language. Dal means pulses. Gram pulses and black pulses are cooking together. And we just want to hit the bottom. Yeah. I see it coming up. Look at this. It's beautiful. Yeah, that looks beautiful like glorious. Yeah, it smells this, so good. There is a garlic oh. uh, and coriander or chili. How long does it take to cook this from beginning yeah, to end? Three yeah. hours. It's a unique recipe. You can try at your home also, but you can't cook such kind of things. Because you are standing on a deck, this, which is a land of food, Sahel, which is a land of God. Mm -hmm. All the recipes are of that God. The recipe from God himself. Yes. Thank you so much. Such an honor to learn more. Thank you. Right now we're headed to where they make the chapati by hand. Maybe we can help them out a little bit. Volunteer? Oh, wow. I mean, look at this. Just take a moment. Maybe a hundred people all coming here to help together making chapati by hand so that there's enough food for the people who come here to eat. Let's go say hi. Each station, it has a kind of dough person. And after that, uh, going forward to another lady, they can just uh, put a dry floor on it. And after that, yeah. she's rolling and make the chapati and food one by upon another. Can we sit down somewhere? Yes. I think so. I wish I could smell it. We got a rolling bin right here. We got our dough. And we can roll some of these. Yes. Do this, first of all. Oh yeah. Please walk through. Well, hold on, my balls are not bad. Yeah, doing too good. So I want to ask a little bit more about the Sikh faith, people of the Sikh faith. I understand that there are certain things that a Sikh person must wear. Can you walk me through some of those? One of them is a turban. Yeah, we have to wear a sangha. It's a wooden comb. It's a wooden comb on our head. Another thing we have to wear is kada. This bangle is called kada. I heard about like always having a blade or a knife. Yes. Is it's, that true? It's called kirpa. And it's you don't take it out? People. That if somebody is in trying to harm you, know, you just have to protect yourself. But we are not ordered to misuse it. Not everybody is doing that, just some people. Not some people, many people. Many people. Yeah. Many people. Do you think he has a blade? Yes. Uncle Kirpan, you have a blade? Look at this. Look at this. Nice. Look at this. And so does she. Nice. Look at this. Look at this. Maximum number of people are wearing that thing. I I didn't know if this was like an older tradition. Mm -hmm. That wasn't so common anymore, but that was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. I'm a little scared to screw this up now. Everyone here has got a weapon. <laughs> but how is this? Yes, it's a perfect. But oh God. Thank God. You just have to roll more. Roll more. Okay. It... Josh, I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm going to get a platter. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> After all that 
of preparation. We've got a whole cooking station here. We've got my man here. He takes the raw ones, he throws it up. She moves it down the assembly line. And by the time it gets over here, yeah. it's finally cooked. Very, very fast because look at the heat is very, uh, very high. Tosses them all in a bucket down yeah. here. Yeah, sure. So fast. I mean, you wonder like, how can they make so much food in one day, but everything is so smooth. They are all are doing very systematically. Like they are just making doughs and rolling the chapatis. And they are just uh, sprinkling on a tawa. Keep so going, yummy. keep going. No way. Awesome. Even three in the morning. Every Somebody's here cooking. Yes. Wow. wow. Unbelievable. After cooking, the bread is slathered with ghee to keep it from uh, drying uh, out and because ghee is delicious. Yeah. Then the thousands of chapatis are transferred to the dining hall. The real miracle of this place isn't the unfathomable amounts of food they're producing each day. It's the principles upheld within these walls. So we are in front of free kitchen, like called Langar Hall, where all people are coming and sit together. There is no such kind of partiality like you are a Hindu, you are a Sikh, you are a Muslim. There is nothing. No matter your religion, income, gender, nationality, as long as you are a human with a beating heart, you may come here, sit shoulder to shoulder with others, and enjoy this meal at no cost. You all all human mm. There is no any partiality. Now, after having the privilege of seeing how this food is made, we get to experience it for ourselves. The serving has begun already. What is this one? It's a kidney beans. In our language, it's called rajma. Thank you. This. It's a water. They have a machine here yeah. to fill up the water. And then another kind of lentil. Like which we saw, it's cooking on the, the that hall. It's a rice pudding. Thank you. There's so much food. Yeah. Should we try some? Yeah. yeah just get one portion, I guess. They can go yeah. back and more. Oh, that looks great. Did he just say that? Perfect. So good. Savory, delicious, and the roti is so perfect. Mmm. I'm so blown away right now. Yes, no blood. The kidney beans. Oh, the kidney beans, yes. It just, it's so delicious. Like it is coming, going, coming and going. Atun, Rajma, Rajma, Rajma. Miss, kidney beans, kidney beans, kidney beans, dream one, kidney beans. There's such like a beautiful sense of community yes, in here. Yes. Wow. Look at around. All kind of guys are sitting. All are sitting together. There is no question. That's called a security. I can tell you, we need more of this in the world. I came here for the experience. Yeah. But also enjoy some fabulous food. After dinner, we drop off our trays and that's when it really hits you. Look at all these people here to help. Witnessing firsthand the wide scale selfless contributions that go into making this kitchen possible. An army of volunteers collecting trays so rapidly it creates a thunderous roar. You can hear this thunderous noise in here. All the people in here are volunteers helping out. Check it out. Lines of men and women sending trays down six consecutive washing stations until they're carefully stacked and brought back to the entrance, ready to serve another meal. Thank you so much for this incredible experience. Man. My pleasure, my pleasure. Being able to be here with somebody of the Sikh faith and kind of see this whole experience through your eyes, and then of course seeing how all this food comes together to feed thousands and thousands of people every day. It's such a treat for me, so thank you. And for you guys, this video was made possible by One Trip Vietnam. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. A peace. peace. All right, man. I'm all about peace now. Thank you. All right, let's go. Wow. He, he, I like him a lot. I, I like, like him a I lot like his too. videos. He seems like a genuine person. Yep. He obviously, we've seen his, his food videos and and he does really well with those. But also the fact that he just wants to learn. Mm -hmm. And I know he doesn't just stick to India. He, he's gone all over the world yeah. and, and done what he's done. But that, what they do in India every single day. And not out of, because there's shelters here. And there's, especially during Thanksgiving, 
Thanksgiving, it's Christmas a big time. Yeah, big thing here in LA and all over the United States on Thanksgiving is a lot of people will start their Thanksgiving morning off going to shelters and feeding the homeless. That's a big thing in America on yeah. Thanksgiving Day. Um, and so what makes it so insane is the amount of people every single yeah. day that yeah. volunteer their time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we do it once a year on Thanksgiving. Yeah, to make ourselves feel good. They do it as just because day. they love and people of and, all walks. And, uh, like and yeah. Like <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing is when we do it here on Thanksgiving, it's 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 almost always definitively a hundred percent of the time it's to feed the homeless. Yep. That's it. Uh, and the criteria for most people is it's the homeless are going to go there and eat. Whereas this it, place is for anybody and everybody who wants to come and in. And it's also usually, especially if it's done by a church or something, they're using it as a as a platform mm -hmm. to spread their message, regardless mm -hmm. of if it's from the heart or not. Correct. Um, <laughs> what's just so amazing is that they're not doing this for any of that. Right. They're doing this because... People need to eat, regardless. Right. Even if even if you're not homeless, right? You're welcome, right? Because like if if you if you weren't homeless and you try to go to a homeless feeding, you would be turned away. Yeah, you know, exactly. These, these are for these are for needy people. You don't right. need it. You don't need it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing. I mean, the inclusiveness as well as the fact that there's nothing, few things more um, personal than breaking bread with somebody shoulder to shoulder and to experience that with uh, and to, to know that you're meeting a practical need because everybody needs to eat it's just it's both encouraging and it's also disheartening yeah cause it's, it's you, encouraging that it exists and you see and the differences and... also like you could never I I've only done a few I'm doing the math on something right now go ahead I've only done a few but like you usually can't get seconds no no, for multiple reasons. Maybe they just they want to have enough for everybody, but also they have a limited amount of resources. Right. That's one of the things I want to know. Are all their resources donated? How do they get those resources? That's. I wish you'd covered that. I really wish you'd covered that. I'm I'm doing math on something about the number of because like that's a lot of food. That is a lot of food. Okay. So yeah, and you could. If you, if you were to do this, say for example in LA, which in LA, Los Angeles city, there's approximately 4 million people in, in just the city, not the county, right? But let's say you had 4 million people, which is actually, that's a low number, that's probably just the San Fernando Valley. Let's just take San Fernando Valley. If you had 80 of these things around, stationed around LA, everybody would eat every day all the time. You'd have, you'd have nobody hungry in the city. Yep, that's all it would take is 80 of them with that level of love and contribution and selflessness and sacrifice and giving. And it's, and it's obviously possible. And you can see the difference culturally. Like people, and we've seen the love that people in India give to just other people. They treat a visitor people, as a god. A visitor as a god and they treat humans as humans. Correct. <laughs> uh, I know, foreign concept. <laughs> but it's not something that's it's done here. You, you, if there's stuff like this done, it's it's there's usually different motives behind it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, publicity. It's because they feel bad. No, and there yeah. are places here. There are some shelters and places that do feed the homeless, and that's what the focus is. Again, it's on the homeless uh, on a on a daily basis, but it's nothing at this scale. And the most the most beautiful thing about this is how it's irrespective of class, irrespective of caste, irrespective of religious belief, gender, sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. If you're a human being with a beating heart, come in. And if you're still hungry, keep eating. It's... And the fact that they're all volunteers. That, <laughs> you, know, you, you can't get that many 24-7. It's going on 24-7. So there's people there who've said, I'll take the 3 a.m. shift. You know, it's, mm. it's remarkable. I would love to go there to want to just see it happen. Um, and do they just let anybody volunteer? Yeah, that's what I would love to know. When he was there, I was like, go, man, go wash the dishes, because that's what I'd like to do. I'd love to be able to volunteer and help, well, help feed and help do the dishes. Do, and, honestly. Yeah, honestly. That, we, can't, we can't cook the food. No. We but wouldn't it, know to call, to call it if we were handing that's it That's what I would want to do. I would want to either like be handing out the bread. I'd like to hand out the bread, and I'd like to wash the dishes. Mm. I, that would make me... Very I'm going to try to, when we get to India, to um, do some sort of uh, 
meet up, but have something behind it. Like uh, I would love to do a, a, a big tree planting somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I know the internet's been big on that recently, but like get a hundred stupid babies together. Yeah. And do something. Everybody plants a bunch of trees. Love it. All over the place. I love, love to talk to different organizations so we can kind of just have a meetup and we can meet everybody, but also help one with yeah. what's going on in the world. Right I'd now. love to do, uh, I'd love to do something. I don't know if, if you guys could connect us with anybody who does this. Uh, I, when I went to Papua New Guinea, uh, we were connected with a church there who every week on Wednesdays does a, a, a food cooking thing and, and anybody who wants to can come to, to eat. And it's usually the homeless and there's a lot in, in Port Moresby, the capital city, there's a lot of um, little orphan kids who are living on the streets. Mm. And they come to eat. So you cook and you feed them and you hang out with them. And they also let them, the church there is open air. Uh, this gets me emotional. Every night at the church, <clears throat> the little kids who are all living on the streets, mm. they come, the church is open. There's no walls. Mm. So they all come and they sleep under the ceiling. There's a couple hundred kids every night in Port Moresby who come and sleep. And once a week they feed them. Mm. Yeah. He's right. We do need more of this in the world. Yeah. This type of uh, mentality of the people, and then also this type of uh, organization. Yeah. This it's type of thing. Inspiring. On. It's it's insane. Great video. Uh, love it. Yeah. And I, this the six man. I just the more we learn about them, the more I'm in love with They're them. They're amazing people. Amazing people. I'm